What is up everybody? It's me Josh back with another video. This time I'm bringing you the second installment of the you know new format deck discussion that I started with Sprite last time. A lot of people asked me to do the same for tier limits and a lot of people also asked me for Rogue. So today we're talking about a couple of the tier limit versions running around and what I think about them. I'll present you guys with some example deck lists that you can start testing with and stuff like that. As far as Rogue goes, I have a tier list for a lot of decks coming up in the next couple of days. So make sure you're subscribed to not miss that video where I'm going to be talking about a whole lot of other different decks. But let us jump right into the topic of tier limits. Now, the first one, the obvious one, is the Danger Tier Limit deck, right? Danger Tier Limits is what everyone considered the best version of Tier Limits last format. And that's why a lot of people, I feel like, started playing the deck for this meta. I personally think the deck is still very powerful. Uh, as you can see here on the screen, I decided to not include Spell Cancel or Eradicator in my deck, simply because I felt like those were a little bit of an overcommitment. On the other hand, these cards are still very powerful depending on what people play. If there ends up being a lot of runics, a lot of power spells in the meta, these cards are still considerable. That's why I still want to include them here. For all these decks, we're not going to be looking at standard combos because we all know like tier limits plays a little bit like it, it's not as controlled of a combo, right? There's not like a standard two card combo I can show you. It depends a lot on what you mill, what your dangers hit, so on and so forth. I mean, you know, you know what tier limits is supposed to do. I felt like with the amount of Nibiru running around, a combo heavy tier limit version would not be the greatest idea, especially if you want to commit to something like this, Cancel or Eradicator, because I think you need to do something like Appalooza. Anyways, I think this version is still fine, I just don't know if it's the best without snow, because without snow you really have like a lot of your interruption focused on the field rather than also having it in the graveyard, which made it a lot better against stuff like Evenly Match, Dark Ruler, stuff like that was like a lot worse against tier last format because the they always had snow. Nibiru in general is a card that if Sprite falls off in popularity a little bit, Nibiru is going to be a, a card that a lot of people play. So you're kind of forced into Appalooza lines, which makes it a lot harder to set up Griffin, which is why there's no Eradicator. You could still play Dugaras and Spell Cancel, but I think there's another tier version that does it better. I think this one should just focus on making, you know, Appalooza, Dweller, Saliak, uh, maybe Elf, bring back Murley, these types of interactions, which are still powerful. But let's hop into another combo tier that can facilitate, I think, the spell cancel a little bit better which of course is uh luna light tier limits this list on the screen here is 46 cards which i don't think is ever optimal but this is what i started testing with i think we don't want to cut nibiru and super poly to make it 40 just because then we have no chance going second pretty much you have to like experiment with this and see if you can cut it down even more you probably can but i haven't been testing this that much simply because this is another deck that i think is very scary to play against especially if you lose the dice roll but for me personally the mirror matches of these combo tier limit decks always seem so shaky going second this deck seems rather weak because you know like i said 46 cards only six dedicated cards for going second which in this case i chose super poly and nibiru because those are the most impactful ones overall this deck is hella scary it can dump out a lot of rank fours which is why in this deck we definitely play the dugaras and the spell counselor i think unless people just don't play many spells but like even the tier limit decks like this one i mean we still have 16 spells here and then other tiers we have um a decent amount of spells as well so spell counselor is all right i think this is one of the decks that is scary to play against but for me personally i don't think this is it simply because a lot of people are playing hand traps a lot of people are playing nibiru i don't know how consistently this deck can go like into an early appalooza and then still summon dugares into spell canceller or you know make another rank four into dweller you probably can with this one that's what the luna cards are good for so with the luna cards i think you make the deck better going first into the hand traps that people play currently which is an advantage of this version however you will be weaker i think going second generally with a deck like this because as you can see space is really really tight and you don't have a lot of room for any tech cards for that matter like going second cards whatever but i do think it's something to to be aware of i think this deck is going to be part of the format i think a decent amount of people are going to pick this i think this deck is better than danger tier for that matter if you're playing a combo heavy tier limit deck i think this one might be the way to go but now this one it, it just caters much towards my play style i feel like sometimes right this is a, a more a, a slower control oriented hand trap tier limit deck which incorporates branded in high spirits instead of dangerous because it's like a guaranteed discard it's not dependent on luck it gives you some amount of grind game because it comes back from the graveyard to your hand i just love this card a lot you can use it in a draw phase to play around effect veiler it even plays around cherries because you use it before you have monsters on the board post side that's interesting but in general i think this 
this deck is solid. The power level is much lower, but it doesn't play as much into Nibiru, for example, which a lot of people play. And it has much more room for hand traps, which means you have like a realistic chance, for example, of preventing a dweller in the mirror match, right? Which the other decks, like a danger tier mirror match, if you don't open Nibiru, you're always going to get dweller and you're probably going to lose. So that's why I prefer something like this, maybe. Like I said, we're playing the Brandon High Spears with the Albion, which, you know, I, at this point, we know the combo. I've shown it off in one of my tech talk videos before, but you basically, you reveal day 3s frog, then you discard a tier monster from your hand, and then together with the d3s frog, you get to make an instant Kid Kalos. So it's basically a little bit like an instant fusion uh, as a quick play spell. If you draw it together with a tier limit, it's quite decent. And then you add the Albion that draws you another card and thins your deck further. I think it's quite cool. I also decided to add a Night Sword Serpent in this build, which is a card that you might not know. It's a level four water. If this card is sent to graveyard by a card effect, you can special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. So it's a good discard for Sharon. It's a good mill randomly. It helps you make rank fours because this deck doesn't have the Lunar Lights. It doesn't have that many mills into like stuff like Zephyros or whatever, Destrudo. We don't have that much access to le level four extenders. So this can help facilitate make that uh, Abyss Dweller that is so, so good in the mirror matches. I also chose to play Cosmic Cyclone because I think Cosmic Cyclone is a great card in the upcoming format with the Runics running around, the Tier Limit Field Spell, Tier Limit Sullyag, Jet Smashers, so on and so forth. I think Cosmic is a great tech card moving forward and that's why I chose to include it here. I'm very happy that we have enough room to play a bunch of hand traps and still have room for the Cosmic. Some stuff in the side that's worth noting here, this is just options. Heart of Desires, I think, is a card that's playable in this one. I think you would have to run a second Albion because you don't want to draw the dead branded in high spirits off of desires because you banished your Albion and I don't think that's that bad because like at the end of the day drawing an Albion is just like an upstart goblin right it's not that bad so you could try and cut three cards for two desires in an Albion uh, you could also be running the rainbow bridge of salvation stuff which also something I wanted to mention in this video because a lot of people have been asking me what I think of this one the way this works the field effect of this card is irrelevant but you can banish this card from your grave, add a Crystal Beast monster and one Field Spell from your deck to your hand. You can only apply each effect of Rainbow Bridge of Salvation once per duel. Of course, we're going to banish this card from the graveyard and since, since it adds any Field Spell, we add Pearl or Rhino alongside Crystal Beast Emerald Tortoise, which is an Aqua Monster. So we can use it to make a Kid Kalos later. We can like discard it for Sharon, then return it from the grave. Even if we draw this card, it doesn't make our combo dead because we can like use it away from the graveyard, put it back to the deck and then grab it later on with the Rainbow Bridge. You get to play Foolish Burial Goods with it, which sends the Rainbow Bridge for an easy plus one and searches your field spell. And if you already have the field spell, you can, instead of sending the Rainbow Bridge, you can just send Tier Limit Saliac to add any Tier Limit from your deck to your hand. So I think it's a quite cute package. Takes a decent amount of slots. You either have to cut the Branded in High Spirits for it, which I'm not a fan of because I, I think that card is very good, or you have to cut other Hand Traps or Cosmic Cyclone for this package. It's a relatively big package, so I'm not sure if it's worth it yet, but I do think the card is worth testing at least. So those are the three most popular tier limit decks that I'm seeing right now. I just quickly want to mention some other stuff before calling it a day on this video because there's some more experimentation to be done. I've seen some people talk about tier limit runic. I just want to quickly say that I don't really consider this a great deck. Just throwing this out here. This is not even a list made by me. I think Twitch chat posted it. I don't actually know who made this particular list. I just don't really see the appeal in pairing runics with tier limits. That's just quickly my two cents. It's like, it's probably not a bad deck because like the tier limit engine is strong. The runic engine is strong. Pairing them together isn't bad. Herald makes Barone. It's a cute idea, but I don't think it's better than, than for example, runic sprite. And also it's not better than other tier limit versions, I think. Then we have tier limit adventure, which I have built this on request on stream. Dream. I haven't even finished the extra deck yet, but it's just a standard tier limit extra deck pretty much. I think this is worth testing. Uh, it's got some dangers. It's got the branded and high spirits. And basically, instead of playing more hand traps, you just play a couple of board breakers, quote unquote, in the form of the adventure package. I think it's fine since you can discard tier limits for Fateful Adventure. That's some neat synergy there. We can also discard like Saliac for Fateful Adventure. It's, it's, it's neat. It's neat, I think. This deck has the benefit of having Griffin to negate the B rule in case people play that more often. Of course, the adventure package takes a decent amount of room so we, we are not able to play as much non-engine maybe we could take out the dangers for more hand traps in this one to have it like a little bit of a, of a mix of the two worlds maybe that's fine just wanted to throw this one in here is to not leave you with just a standard deck and then one more word for the tier limit scare claw which i don't have a list for but basically it plays a uh, right card visa starfrost arrival and uh, the field spell i think it's all right that's something to be experimented with but i haven't really made my mind up on that yet a lot of other tier limit versions are going to be 
included in my tier list video. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that this one doesn't have like in-depth replays and everything because I thought that was really complicated with tier elements, but I just wanted to give you guys my two cents on all the popular tier element versions right now, what I think of them, what I consider to be the strengths and the weaknesses of each individual version to help you guys make a more educated decision on which version to test, which version to choose. And yeah, I hope it was helpful. If it was, then uh, feel free to leave some feedback in the comments down below, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the in-depth meta tier list coming in probably one or two days it's already filmed and just waiting to be edited and uploaded hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys have a great rest of your day and without further ado see you next time bye bye